A Pennsylvania company from Lancaster, along with help from Electrodata Inc. of Garland, Texas, created a masterpiece in horology, launched in 1972, that stands as America's biggest watch success story. The shiny new Pulsar, announced the Pulsar Time Computer, was billed as the world's first digital watch. Thank you for visiting the Time Sticking YouTube channel. I'm your host, Jake. And if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to like it and subscribe if you want to see more. And without further ado, let's run the intro and I'll tell you how an American brand accomplished such a feat. As the story goes, director Stanley Kubrick asked the Hamilton Watch Company to create a futuristic digital clock for his 1968 film, 2001 A Space Odyssey. The film was a huge success and became the highest grossing picture of 1968. However, the oval clock that Hamilton produced with glowing red digits captured the public's attention in its own right. The digital clock created for the film inspired the creation of a watch with a similar display. The first wrist computer was unveiled on Johnny Carson's The Tonight Show on May 5th, 1970. However, Carson was not impressed, stating, It uh, will be available for consumers next year. It will sell for $1,500. The watch also will tell you the exact moment that you went bankrupt. <laughs> At the time, anything that sounded like a computer on your wrist seemed right out of science fiction. After all, computers were still enormous. The new Pulsar was unlike anything the world had seen before, featuring 44 integrated circuits, 4,000 bonding wires, plus seven ceramic circuit boards, each with its own function. The timekeeping signal was supplied by a quartz crystal vibrating at 32,768 hertz, which was about three times the frequency of crystals being used in the electric analog watches, allowing the time to deviate by no more than three seconds a month, making it the most accurate watch in the world. It was the first watch to display time in a digital format using light emitting diodes or LED. The sales presentation was simple. The LED had three or four red digits, indicating the hours and minutes that appeared on the screen for slightly more than one second and then blinked off. It was magic. It took Hamilton two years to bring the Pulsar to market, a name chosen to imply space age technology, calling it the time computer. In April 1972, a full page ad in the Wall Street Journal announced that the wrist computer was on sale at a whopping price of 2100 US dollars, equivalent to over 14,000 US dollars in today's world. To bring that into perspective, that was more than a Ford Pinto at the time, and $150 more than a top of the line Rolex, too. The anticipated launch included upscale retailers like Tiffany's and Neiman Marcus, who carried the watch. Hamilton manufactured 400 units for the arrival and sold out in three days. The factory soon followed the original 18 karat gold watch with gold filled case models priced less at 1,275 US dollars and steel case models at 275 US dollars. In late 1972, Hamilton reorganized and named John Berge as president, making Pulsar its own subsidiary called the Time Computer Inc separate from their traditional watch division. By the end of the year, the company was selling thousands of units per month, outselling every high-end watch in the world. It was also the first watch imported into Switzerland, the famous watchmaking country, which was a significant feather in their cap. By 1973, the watch reached new heights on the wrist of James Bond, played by Roger Moore in the movie Live and Let Die, featuring a Hamilton Pulsar P2. The watch can be seen on Bond's wrist in the first scene when James checks his watch to see what time it is. The viewers can see how the watch works. To see the time, Bond pushes the button on the side of the watch so that the LED time lights up. In May 1974, HMW Industries, the parent company to Hamilton, doubled down on their LED success and sold the Hamilton brand to the Omega and Tissot holding company, SSIH, which later became the Swatch Group while holding on to their newly formed Time Computer Inc. The decision to sell seemed safe. Early on, by the end of 1974, Pulsar sales exceeded 17 million US dollars, 
and in 1975 soared even further to $25 million on sales of 150,000 watches. In its brief existence, the Pulsar Time Computer launched several versions of their watch. The P1 model, marketed in 1972, the world's first electronic digital watch. The P2 model, marketed in 1973, the world's first successful mass-produced digital watch. The P3 model, marketed in 1973, the first LED watch with date. The P4 Executive, marketed in 1975, which was a smaller version of the P3. The Pulsar Time Computer Calculator, the first electronic calculator watch, which launched in late 1975 as an 18-karat gold limited edition version and sold for Christmas that year for an enormous price of $3,950 US dollars. It was a huge success as well. The first Pulsars were marketed to men, however, there was a ladies' Pulsar version 2, launched in 1974. By this time, America was leading the global quartz watch revolution. The Pulsar watch was rewriting the watch industry's playbook. Texas Instruments from Dallas was supplying digital LCD modules to Switzerland's Ibouche SA, now called ETA. From 1972 to 1974, Omega had purchased 30,000 LED modules from Pulsar to use in Omega time computer watches, the first LED watch introduced to Europe. In 1976, in a stunning development, Texas Instruments dropped its LED prices to $19.95. The next year, they cut LED prices again to $9.95. Large-scale production had dramatically lowered the cost of digital modules. Consumers eventually found that having to push a button to read the time was cumbersome, and by 1977 the LCD display had overtaken the market. A policy of cutthroat price cutting that wiped out competitors. After various corporate moves, the Pulsar LED would go out of production in 1978. The Pulsar brand joined the Seiko Watch Corporation family in 1979. Today, the brand continues as a division of Seiko, which is among the leading watch brands throughout the world. The American LED watch phenomenon deserves its place in watch history. In fact, the Smithsonian Institution, the world's largest museum, education, and research complex, located in Washington, D.C., exhibits the prototype for the original Pulsar watch as an important contributor to the technology of quartz watches.